Welcome back to Nicholas Cage International Treasure. Uh, I'm here with uh, Daniel and Kieran. John oh. is also uh, missing again this week, but replacing him. John has changed two <laughs> letters of his name <laughs> for one night. Well, two nights only. Josh. Hello. Hello, Josh. Hiya. Josh was also a guest on that podcast we never did. We didn't. What, what the lost that? episode. Yes, yeah, so the the lost tapes. <laughs> <laughs> He's back for. The uh, 1982 film Fast Times at Ridgemont High, directed by Amy Heckerling, written by Cameron Crowe, who wrote the book and the screenplay. There's a oh, book. There's a book. There's a book. Oh, I didn't realize it's a book. Starring Jennifer Jason Lee, Sean Penn, Judge Reinhold, and Nick Coppola. Mm. Yes, this was the one time that he used that that name. Nick Cage's very first uh, on-screen. What's it called? It's his on-screen debut. Mm. Debut. Synopsis is, it's the last day on Earth and Nick Cage must monologue his way to victory against horny high schoolers in order to change his name. The joke being is that he does not say one single line in this film. He's barely in it for two seconds. Can I just say, I I didn't see him. (laughs) You didn't? No, I had to rewind. I didn't see him. I I caught a glimpse of him. He was, um, very briefly. Burnt? Bill? He he had a name. Brad's, Brad's, Brad's. Brad's Brain. bud. Yeah. Brad's bud. bud. That's it. So he's he's in it um near the start in the hall, like the school hall, he's there with Brad. <laughs> he also works at the burger place. Wherever that I didn't is. fucking see him. <laughs> oh, no, he's, he's, there's, there's, he's there he's there when he gets uh Bra- fired. Fired. What, what yeah. you see like literally a very blurred image what? of him because it moves the camera. Him and his other mate, yeah. there's and they avoid looking at him. I can't remember the, who Brad is. Like which one Brad is, is Brad? the guy who gets fired, and then he's the he's one. That the oh, the one has. that the one that plays um Charlie's stepdad in the Santa Claus movies. Yes, that's what. That's yeah, what. Yeah. I, that's what I, <laughs> I don't he's, understand that. He's right. Neil the psychiatrist. Oh, okay. Um, Judge Reinhold. There's quite a lot of his his name. There's he, a lot was, of he was Mr. Man in in in, in, in uh, the cop. Show. Of course, his name, is, of course his name is, yes. isn't, isn't yeah. actually Judge. There's a lot of famous names in this film. Edward. Well, this, Jennifer Jason Lee's first on screen or Ooh. big on screen appearance. There's a mugshot well. of, Judd, of Judge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's him there. Yeah. That's ironic. He got, he got arrested at an airport and he was wow. apparently embarrassed. Mm. <laughs> you were embarrassed. How yeah. did we find this film? I went in knowing. Nothing about it, mm. so I was quite, quite sharp. Same here. It's sort of been like a, a a name that's sort of been bandied around in conversation, talking about Nicolas Cage and the fact that this was his first his first film, and we've it's the Fast Times at Richmond High, uh, and and it, it um it exceeded expectations. Really, I liked it. Oh, okay. I liked it. It kind of gave off like. Um, what's that film with Stifler's mum and stuff in it? Which is American, American Pie. It kind of gave off a really weird version of that, but from the eighties. It's an American coming of age film, yeah. like that American Pie. Yeah, the Days typical, and confused. Yeah, the that kind of thing. Typical. You've got the stoner kid. You've got the <laughs> Sean obs- Penn. You've got the obscene amount of sex scenes that clearly don't need to be added in this movie. It's kind of odd. Yeah, um, for high school students at the same time. Especially yeah. as Jennifer Jason Lee's character is fifteen in the film. Yep. Fuck that's off. What, yeah, she says it. At she's twenty start. at filming, but she's fifteen in the film. There's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of tits in this film yes. that for the eighties where you were kind of like. 
this also is... a coming of age film. You don't normally no, see, like in the no. sort of normal like eighty like coming of age films of the time, like uh, like Breakfast Club, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, like pretty much anything mm-hmm. that was written by what's his fucking name. He did like Sixteen Candles and all that shit. Yeah, John mm-hmm. John Hughes. There you go. It's 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 not like the the normal coming of age film because there is there is breastage. I did like <laughs> some of the storylines throughout it though. Like it was some of them were a bit eh. Then, the storylines. Yeah, because yeah. he kind of fall. The one with the stoner kid, I think, was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, he's the most. He is character. the most. He is the greatest character in this whole film. The man is just wanting to enjoy life, and it's just him and this teacher that he's got, who's like the a history teacher, teacher. Mister Yan. Yeah. Who is just Mister Hand? It was Mr. Hand. 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 Yeah, hand. Mister Hand. Yeah, so that was his name. I thought it was Mister. Daniel liked this film. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it at work, guys. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's better than now. Show. I was clean, I was cleaning and doing date labels when this was going on. It's better than showing up here still halfway through the film. We've got to rewatch it for yeah, a minute. Not, it should be surprising. <sighs> Mr. Hand and the, the yeah, Stone their whole Sean Penn. What was his name in the film? Buster? Something. Yeah. Surf guy. Dude, that's the, a typical stoner character. Uh, the, although the, he do, I don't think he actually. There's no pot smoking in it. He, yeah, there's loads. They literally like they hotbox the van like with yeah, every scene that he yeah, enters they get, it. They but get, they don't. There's no like him smoking. No, 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 no. But it's it's it's, it's the most you see is Atlanta. like when he's got that fucking no, case of beer. There is. He smokes. He's, he's taking a rip from a bong right at the end before the the big dance. Is and then, oh then, yeah, yeah. When that's so his wasted. Way. Yeah, and he turns up in a fucking Hawaiian shirt, <laughs> baller move with a tie. With I a fucking with love it's that. that Hawaiian shirt. Love that. Tie, tie combo is rare. I, but th- I think yeah, yeah be, be fucking comfortable, dude. Don't turn up in a in a suit if you're if you're not a suit guy. Don't wear a suit. Yeah. And he turned up in a fucking he turned up in a Hawaiian shirt. I love it. He was he wearing shorts? No, it was, it was like jeans or something. But nah, if he was, if he was wearing like surf shorts with a surfboard. Been like, yeah, we're gonna hit this wave. Uh, like, honestly, uh, he's the only likable character in the whole film. He's just everyone else has like some weird motives. The guy that's never chi- happy. <laughs> the guy the that theater was... guy, the guy who works at the theater. Yeah, the guy that's chasing after the the, the sort girl. of protagonist. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess, but he's he's just a nervous dude. I didn't mind that. Yeah. It's not boy. offensive. Yeah. He's just a. The Brad boy was alright, the one who was like trying to succeed. He was really a jerk off over his He was an asshole, so he got quickly humbled. (laughs) (laughs) And then gets caught. You know, I was expecting them to sort of hook up at the end and that she would fall for him, but no. No, they just just... needed an excuse to have a tit scene in the film. Several tit scenes. There was so many tit scenes (laughs) in this. The only thing that made me realise what the film was was the where she comes up the the pool. I was like, oh fuck, that's where that's from. Mm. So that's probably quite a famous thing. This was Jennifer oh, Jason Lee's goodness. breakout role as well, and she w- she she, yeah. went, <laughs> she went she went she was in she's been in fucking Tarantino films. She's also in Atypical. The one she plays Tarantino film. Was one that? Tarantino film. Was it Hateful Eight? Yeah, it was the only one. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was she in any other? She's the crazy. Uh, I spat on it. Yeah. The letter from Lincoln. Oh, she's the bounty, isn't she? Yes. 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 She's in Annihilation, The Machinist. She's the she's the therapist. Mm. I've only just realised. The woman. Yes, she's an atypical. Yes. Oh. Uh, backdraft, <coughs> rush, weeds, flesh and blood. So what did we think? Of Nicolas Cage's performance. I can't speak on that. <laughs> Honestly, that I missed the guy. I think he hit, hit the nail on the head. Well, it's not a background act, though. The man had a lot of passion in his he presence. He looked shocked yeah. when he needed <laughs> to look shocked. Yeah. He looked interested in what Brad was about to say when he needed to. You he, know, the he, good first performance. Good, good support now. He did yeah. get in trouble for this film, though. You think that's what he meant when he said to his uncle, I'll fucking show you acting. And he's <laughs> like, I'll be the best goddamn Ooh. background actor. What do you have to say, Brad? Yeah, he got in trouble with this film because he told all the producers he was like, because I think for a movie that was that kind of genre with yeah. all the tits, he had to be over eighteen. Right. Whereas he was only seventeen when he was he took part, uh-huh. and he told all the producers and that that he was well over the age of eighteen. And then turns out after they shot it, direct and put it all together and sent it out to the world, they were like, he's not over eighteen. <laughs> Nicholas Cage, 
disappeared into the wind. Is it Nick Seventeen Year Old? Who's Nick Coppola? Who's Nick Coppola? I'm Nick Cage. Isn't that like Mila Kunis in Thirty Rock or whatever she was in? Yes, was she, she in? was meant to be of a certain age and she wasn't. Same with what's that really big girl group from Ireland? The fuck, I can't remember. You two girls? Uh, <laughs> no, one of them's from one of them's from Derry. Yes, but uh, huh. from Derry. Yeah, uh, uh, it's she, like girls allowed. She. Um, oh so when yes, pop, it was on pop pop stars. Pop, or it was on pop idol, right? So what happened? Is, so excited! It's one of the <laughs> fucking. <laughs> this is genuinely one of the greatest biggest, British culture yeah, moments yeah. of all time. So what happened is she was doing the audition part or something, or she got through. She um, was in the band. Yeah, she, she was. Uh, yeah, in the band. she was in the band, and they were asking her what her day of birth was because you had to be a certain age to be part yeah. of it. Mm. And then she she mucked it up. Yeah, she was. So like, she was babbling my, on for a while. My, my my date of birth is the fifteenth of the sixth, nineteen eighty five. Oh wait, did, did I say no? Did... And then she's on the phone, like daddy, daddy, I've got my passport. It's in the car. It's in the car. <laughs> that's exactly what happened. And it's the greatest TV moment in British history that's ever happened. She just outs herself. Yeah. She outs herself to, to millions. <laughs> was was Pop Idol the X Factor before the X Factor? Yeah, this was this was on this program. It was it was like pop stars or something. Like that. It was yeah. it was what like um Will Young and fucking Gareth Gates and that is what they mm. came up on. I thought he was a footballer. Who? Gareth Bale <laughs> is the footballer. Gareth <laughs> Gates is the singer. Gareth Gates is the singer. So you can take that. No, that Gareth. It's no was, Gareth, was, 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 Gareth, Gareth Malone is the fucking choir name. guy that he did like the, he did the fucking military wives shit. All oh, right, okay. you're thinking of Gary Barlow. He's an, no, he's the guy with the bow tie. <laughs> what are you fucking? Yeah. You're just shit lording now. You're trying to derail our our, 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 our love of our, our love of pop of Gareth Malone, right? Um, we love you, Gareth. What are you doing? Any cageisms? <laughs> <anyone? laughs> there was this one bit where he did this like, and it was I. Uh, uh, you guys don't know you what I did scr- there. Yeah, just scrubs your face. He, he did a. So Daniel was opening his mouth. I thought you didn't. It's widening his eyes. I thought you didn't see him. I'm just guessing. You lying I, to I me. would I'm like guessing. to. Have to be fair, it's, it's not a bad uh, assumption. He did do that. <laughs> 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 you, did you describe it to the listeners? So, open, open eyes. Like a goldfish, if you might. Yeah, but with slightly, like a slightly excited. Italiano mano, like a little bit. Yeah. With a name like Coppola, he's gonna be. It's a, it's a blink and you miss it kind of thing, but <laughs> it's kind of open eye open. It's an mouth, understated mouth ajar, performance. Mouth ajar, eyes slightly widened. <laughs> <laughs> Kieran, you have something to say. I have a fucking thing. Yes. Uh, Nicholas Cage or Nicholas Coppola you're going to say what was his inspiration for the performance <laughs> <laughs> no he trained for months he did actually try and go for the role as Brad oh, but they, I they, imagine. they thought he was they, they pushed him to the side role of he got cut Brad's on butt <laughs> he went to a non-speaking role that was his one and only role as Nicholas Coppola by the way I'll be interested to see like the films after this like because he can't have been full mad cagey straight away because no. he would have had to have like had no ego about it for a time and just fit the role rather than because this is what he does here is he fits the role he's not mad he's not well, raising arizona it. wasn't that 86 so there's four it was in the 80s so i think there's like four years difference between and that was a bit mad mad cagey but that was oh. coen brothers so they would have just I'll been see like, how many films there was in between ahead. this well i think because this is his only one in ro- one role is Nicholas Coppola. That's it. None yeah. None of them after this. None of them. And he so this role c- possibly caused him to change his name. It's like I hate just being a background character. Is that his God-given name? Coppola. Yeah. Yeah. He's the He's nephew the... of Francis Ford Coppola, who did The Godfather and a Full Metal Jacket and all that. That was Stanley no, Kubrick. No. no, it was Stanley no. Apocalypse Now. Yes. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I get my Vietnam films mixed up. <laughs> yeah, so he was... Raising Arizona was See, 87. Mm. So there was Fast Times Ridge, Van Halen, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yes. Eight mm. films between them. That's... In like six, None four of years. The one Vampire's thing. Kiss. So he went from Brad's Bud to Vampire's Kiss in six years. 
That's not bad. For Vampire's an Kiss. Have you seen it, Josh? No, I've not. That is the film where a lot of the cages and st- yeah, and yeah. um, <laughs> I, I just pulled the A B yeah. C D reciting the him running down the road. I've seen the I'm a vampire. I'm a vampire. I'm mix. a vampire. I've seen the Watch Mojo top ten cage. <laughs> <laughs> he he does his research I've for dipped, this I've, podcast. <laughs> I've dipped my toe in the cage pool. <laughs> but it'd be good to see. Well, so what's in between? Those well, Peggy those Sue films. got ma- uh, Peggy Sue got uh, Pe- Peggy got married as well. Peggy Sue. Uh, Peggy Sue got married as one of them. So we've got Valley Girl, Rumblefish, Racing with the Moon, The Cotton Club, Birdie, The Boy in Blue, Peggy Sue got married, Raising Arizona, Moonstruck, then Vampires Kiss. No, never on Tuesday. Oh, same year as the never year on Tuesday was, Tuesday was the year after Vampires Kiss. Well, yeah, was eight, it was eight, after. Eight. Oh, that was Valley Model. Oh, what do you think it is? Well, the film itself, I I thought was okay. It's, it's maybe, coming of age films. I think I, I think I on a really after day dazed film. and confused, yeah. it's difficult to top that kind of film with with at, of the era because there's coming of age films after that, like the way way back. Is a really good sort of more modern coming of age film. I don't think it knew what it wanted to be. Right. Because I think it, it jumps from like to, to drama to softcore porno to fucking stoner film in like the space of like 20 to minutes. Abortion. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was a, a, she yeah. got over that abortion very fucking quickly. Abortion. Yeah, I did. It, it, it really rush it along. It really is fast times at Richmond High. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> things, move, <laughs> like, things move fast. There's, there's like, like the first 20 minutes happens. She's like, you're telling the story like, well, this is Stacy, isn't it? And she's like, oh, I want to lose my virginity. Okay, cool. 26-year-old guy walks in. Let's just fucking do it. Lies to Christmas a 26-year-old. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just gets jumps months. to Christmas. It's fucking weird. Yeah, and the she's still getting over, over this guy. The whole it's over a year. Yeah, the whole film goes over a year, right? Yeah. It was the last <laughs> year of high, high school. school. Yeah. But not for... No, it's, yeah, Brad's, it's Brad's last year. Yeah. And... I think it's, it's only Brad's last year, I think. And Brad is the cool guy at the start of the film. Everyone loves Brad. He comes into work and everyone's like, hey, Brad, how's it going? He drives a nice and car. He's a jock. He's yeah. A, yeah. He, and then his life falls apart because he gets fired and then his girlfriend dumps him. Right when he's about he's to, yeah. to dump yeah. her. Obviously, yeah. he wanted to do the dumping. He's the only on. one that's actually interesting out know, of all of it because he's the only one that actually goes through any change. He's There's a character arc yeah. to Brad. <laughs> and he's really, he's fucking cool about, like, with, with his sister he's like I, he picks her up from, from the, the abortion from clinic. The abortion very clinic. Nice he drives her to it and then because she says oh, I'm going bowling he's like you're not going bowling <laughs> since when do you bowl yeah. and then he's <laughs> he's, he's, he's cool he's, wear the pirate outfit. <laughs> he's a supportive brother and the ending's very good as well what was the ending so they're in the <laughs> he has that job now in like uh Gas oh no, yeah, really <laughs> like yeah. fucking uh, Sean, <laughs> Sean Penn walks in. He's like, "Hey, why are you working at Burger Burger?" Bur- and he's like, "That was eight months ago." <laughs> right seven, on, dude. Seven months. Ago. <laughs> seven, mo- seven months. Sorry, I. Right. Sorry, I thought times mo- times move faster than that at Richmond High, but it seems they I was very much mistaken. They skip June. So um, Sean Penn kinda... goes to the bathroom, and it's just out of nowhere. A man comes in to rob the place. The safe, the safe at the back. I've been scooping this place for a long time. I know what, I know what the deal is. I know what I'm Staking doing. Staking out the gas station yeah. for months, and then he's fuck. He's he he doesn't know what to do. He's like, they've shown me the procedure. I'm new here. Sorry. And he's there to save the day, but Sean Penn walks back around eating Cheetos or something, <laughs> and he's like, oh whoa, dude. And then uh, Brad throws coffee over yeah. the assailant, yeah, tackles him, and then he gets, gets, gets his gun mm. off him. And he just and points then, at it for five minutes, going, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> And you see, you see the guy's getaway car going in the opposite direction. They scoot off. There and goes your ride. He'll be a hometown hero. <laughs> yes, he Printed in the papers. He, I he think becomes that's a manager. That. That's his. That's mm. the end. He goes a manager. Oh yeah, he that. does. Because there's the where are they now? Yeah. Bit. I like that part of films. I like. I, I hate it. it. <laughs> oh, I, <love> it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. Un- I, I don't understand it because they're it's, not real fucking people. But it's like, so, it's like the end of a documentary. It's like the like, end of Band of Brothers <laughs> when they they're like <laughs> Sergeant uh, Gonorrhea went on to <laughs> George. 
His Every... funeral was attended by 2,000 people. <laughs> Every Dam- film Dam- is Damien this. Lewis and his very Whereas it's like, accent. it's uh, Sean Penn uh, saved an actress's life and spent all the money having Brooke, Iron Brooke Van Halen's and played his birthday. Brooke Shields. Remember Brooke when Shields. She, that, she was relevant at that time. I had to look up who she was. <laughs> she, Brooke Shields is like, she's in fucking... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what she's. I I just yeah, know her. Fa- just I know her face, man. Household name: Brooke Shields. <laughs> Brooke <laughs> Shields. Brooke, well, he's the That's Brooke Shields. Shields. I like the whole bit when they tell you with her because it in my head it fucks off a sequel in the end, right? <laughs> because who the fuck's gonna? Because right, every year now we're getting sequels to movies you don't fucking need, right? right. Everything. I'm t- I'm talking about the fucking. Uh, a orphan movie that I just watched as well, right? Oh, yeah. Doesn't need a sequel. It's a prequel, but it's a sequel. It doesn't need it, right? See, if you do those wee bits at where they are now, you don't need 20 years down the line bringing in all these old actors. Like the whole fucking Jurassic Park, that was awful as well, the new one. Jurassic <laughs> World. When they brought in the old Jurassic Park actors and actually they didn't need Jurassic it. Jurassic World didn't need it. It was awful. <laughs> <laughs> Did that come out? Yeah, yeah it's just been out for like a year. It's, all, it's not good. I'm not going to recommend it. But he, yeah. It's just like. They brought like Jeff Goldblum and Chris Pratt together. Because, because, right? because all they do is they go, here's your childhood. And they're old and they can say a couple of lines and then they're like, oh, dinosaurs. The Neil Watson's face was in it as well, right? Marvel's yeah. literally just been doing that for the yeah, new, no, The one from New Zealand. Yeah. That's all, that he's, all, he's also in uh, Peaky Blinders. Like, he is. Mr. Shelley. <laughs> You've been is a naughty that, man, yeah, Mr. Shelley. Is that a detective? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Sam Neil. From Belfast. Sam Neil. <laughs> yes. Him and Jeff Goldblum and Chris Pratt and it's Ginger Lady. What's her name? Yeah. She something. I'm lost. We're it. just gonna call it Ginger Lady. But it's a. I, I do think uh, even though it's a funny way, I just like to. Cause I, I love that we bit the end of a documentary where they're like, "Where are they now?" I think they. I I could be wrong. I think they did it at the end of Wet Hot American Summer. Well, that's, a, that's a massive piss yeah, take. and they still did a sequel to that. Yeah. <laughs> it might have been a prequel. I've still not seen Wet Hot American. No, it's, 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 it's a It's Jason. Your best friend, How I Met Your Mother, is it? Is he's in it as well? Is he? Yeah, pretty sure he's in it. S- Paul Rudd, Laura and Dern, and Bradley Cooper, and the woman from Parks and Rex, and and John H. Benjamin in the second one. I can't remember. I'm bad with names of directors, but yeah. it's a funny film. And then yeah. they do it in an immediate sequel, but they filmed it 20 years <laughs> later. <laughs> so everyone's really good. Bradley Cooper is really older. They just pretend. Yeah, like Bradley just... Cooper's in it. Fucking everyone's am in I it. Amy Poehler. Am I imagining that Jason Michael Bateman Black. was in this film, or is Jason Bateman in it? I think he's in it. He's I, I just might have imagined Who that knows? Jason Bateman's in it. A guy called Jason Schwartzman's in it. But that's another coming of age and film. Jordan, that's a piss take Jordan Peele. Film. Jordan Peele? He, that must be the second one. That's yeah, I was going to say, that's like, no fucking way. Is that... Yeah, I don't like a good coming of age film, but I think previous ones, when you look at the ones from the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, they're the best. No idea ones, they are really good, right? But they just don't have that silly comedy... Because everyone, all the comedy age films now are centered around, like, your Instagram and Twitter and, oh my God, this person's popular. I, can, I couldn't give a I fuck. Couldn't give I, a fuck. I, I want to go back to simpler times with flip float. Yeah, flip I want to see the yeah. stoner show up to class and everyone's just like learning and about... order a pizza. That's yeah. fucking hell. That's <laughs> fucking <laughs> hilarious. He orders a fucking pizza to class. I mean, come on. That's that, that's funny as fuck. Well, Can we do it? Go. I, I've got a story about this. So, who's the fucking guy that plays the stoner again? Sean, Sean Penn. Penn. So, um, when they were filming this film, he's won Oscars. Yeah, for let's, milk, let, right? let's let let right. milk. Uh, I think he's won this two. Is, uh, bring, this is how. So even off screen, he would take. He would try and piss off the guy who played Mister Hand, <laughs> just to egg him on, and he would take. He would spend the whole when they were not shooting or not doing scenes with each other. He would still do stuff to piss him off because he wanted him to be as angry as he possibly could <laughs> during these scenes <laughs> with him. Uh, that's just a great way of Sean that. went fucking method for this. Oh, he, he's a method actor. Please, <laughs> please tell me he took like surf lessons and and spent the whole thing. He directed blitzed. Into the Wild, didn't he? I think he did. I Sean hope he did because I, that was fucking garbage. I like that. I like that. Guy, that. I fucking hate that. 
What a fucking He's a horrible what guy. A fucking douche. He's like <laughs> he's been hand, he's been handed this fucking this money <laughs> and he's like that? I don't need that and then he goes off in the well and he gets killed by a fucking berry. <laughs> A berry, yes, yeah, a berry, it's a berry. Yeah. A berry, <laughs> yes, yeah, a berry. I thought it was a berry. Fucking got <laughs> no. fucking. You've missed her. Ma- yeah, nice this makes fun. him an even bigger cunt. It's a good film. Vince Vaughn's in it. It must be. Good. Everything with Vince Vaughn. <gasps> Have you seen the fucking Vince? Right, I'm the sorry, D&D the... group. No, Vince no, Vaughn. no, no. <laughs> Have you seen the newest Vince Vaughn film where he plays a serial killer and he swaps bodies with a teenage girl? I've, I've seen the trailer it's, for the... I will make you watch it at some point. <laughs> it's, me and Ellie have watched it several times. Great film. So basically, it's a new film. It came out 20, 20 21. Oh, so yeah. basically, it's a, him and this girl... <laughs> she just, just shaking his head. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so Vince Spawn's a serial killer, right? Yes. Is, it called, and this girl, is it called Freaky? Yes, yes. So uh, this girl... Freaky, um, freaky, this freaky. girl and something happens... Is it and a they, Freaky Friday remake? Yeah, yeah and they right. switch bodies and Vince Spawn has to play a teenage girl... And this girl. That's the third remake. And this girl. And this girl. <laughs> but it's Vince Vaughn! Right? And he plays this teenage girl so beautifully well. What the it's fuck? The when did Freaky Friday the remake come out? That wasn't that long ago. <laughs> that, that was, was a lot. That was a. That no, was the like, first one, yeah, but there was a remake. Yeah, with uh, Lindsay Lohan yeah. and. Uh, she keeps dying. It's like a sort of Groundhog right. Day thing, or am I getting confused? No, no. So Freaky is. There we go. So it's yeah, that one. I've seen. I've seen. That, but there's like another one that came out at the same time where probably this girl keeps running from someone oh, and she um, keeps dying. Um, dead death day or something like that. It's just Groundhog Happy Day. Happy death yeah. day. Murder. Huh? Happy death. Yeah, that's day. it. Yeah, that was quite a Freaky good. Freaky Friday the same was two thousand and three. Yeah. No, Freaky has been. Well, that was three. Three. But I will recommend Freaky to anyone because it's really fun because you get to watch uh, Vince Vaughn pretend to be like a teenage girl for you. About two hours is great. That's like that um, guy who Jack played Black in Jumanji. Chandler. Uh, Matthew Perry. In the <laughs> film where him and Zac Efron yeah. swap bodies. Or no, he, they don't. It's, or he turns into Zac Efron. That's what he... That's not how, much, that's what? Not a bad film. how the fuck does that happen? How does he turn from Zac Efron into... Something goes wrong or right, depending really on your preferences. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against Matthew. There's <laughs> a magic. There's a magic um, in that seventeen again. There's a magic something like a bin man or like a. <laughs> That doesn't mean... Yes! Yeah! No, it's a janitor. It's an, it's an angel janitor. Yeah. He's gone back to visit his high school and the guy, and he's just looking at how like he was like the fucking king in school and now his life's shit. His fucking wife's left him. You he's want got to horrible experience job. it again, do you? Who plays him? Who plays him? Well, he with my he magic he box. He, I don't like it. <laughs> he, might, he must have like a couple of lines, but he just keeps giving them like stares, and you're like, "He's the magic man." <laughs> well, all right. So it's like there's a little jingle when he comes on yeah. the screen, and, and he gives you a look, and he's like, <laughs> and then you see him in the crowd, and you're like, <gasps> "The genie custodian." <laughs> With a swamp of his and he's, he's, here. And he's <laughs> best friends, the geek that's a billionaire. That's yeah, into that's like, he's into like Star Wars and Star Trek, and he has like this. Brian he's Doyle <laughs> Murray, it's this fucking guy. Let's see. I think I've seen him in. Stuff. He's been in fucking loads of shit. He's just that cranky old man and things. In everything. But had like a really prolific <laughs> career back in the 60s. He, was in, gr- he was in Groundhog. <laughs> Was he? he was in Groundhog Day. Yeah. You were just speaking about Groundhog Day. Oh, uh, Groundhog Day esque. <laughs> well, we've come full circle. It's no, we haven't. We haven't got back to Nick Cage. <laughs> <laughs> we've got about 12 more loops to get back to the yeah. start. Well, if we want to get right, if we want to get, get there, uh, Freaky Friday, Chad Michael Murray was in Freaky Friday. Yeah. Chad Michael Murray was also in. Left Behind, which also starred Nicholas, Nicholas Cage. Cage. Well done. There we go. There we go. Call me fucking Kevin Bacon. Two degrees Kevin of separation. Bacon. Kevin Bacon. His ad's really annoying. He's, yeah, because he's, he's the E. He he's played the a pedo guy. once. <laughs> what? Yeah, there's a film where Kevin Bacon plays a pedo, and he got a lot of flack for it, and no one hired him for ages. What the f- <laughs> <laughs> Could be that? wrong. <laughs> Just slandering this man. Do <laughs> I like? He literally brought it back, and we immediately went off course again. Let's 
just clarify this before we move on, just in case, you the know, woodsman. Kevin Bacon... Yes, that's thing. what it's called, The Woodsman. 2004, yeah, Kevin Bacon. Played he, got, he got fucking, like, death threats for it. I mean, he got good reviews, like, overall. Is that why he's doing the E? He's, he <laughs> needs to pay he was, his people. He, he was seeking an Oscar for that, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. He saw. He definitely saw Stanley Tucci in Lovely Bones and thought, "Yeah, I want to do. I'm going to do. A, I'm going to do a controversial." Do you, want, role. do you want to guess how much money it made overall? How much money the film made? Yep. Right. What the woods film starring about. Kevin Bacon as pedophile? Yes. As pedophile, is that <laughs> it? His that character his is character. called Peter File. Peter File. <laughs> Who's a pedophile? <laughs> I'm pedophile! I'm pedophile! <laughs> how much did it make? What was the budget and how much did it make? Right, here we go this thing. Probably quite high because Kevin Bacon was quite a renowned actor. Right? I so don't know. Kevin Bacon kind of fell money. off. Ah, okay. He lost why do you think he started doing fucking EE? Yes, yeah, why right. they, they, they lost a lot of money. It had a 3 million US dollar budget. Right. That's low. Make. I'm going to say that it didn't even make half. I'll, I'll say four million. Four point seven million. So well, it made it made money. One point nice. What what one point four million profit? Yeah, one point one four point. This is okay. Speak one point seven million. That's, That's almost two bad. thirds of their money back. That's yeah. not bad for a no. film about pedophile. Oh. Yeah. yeah, a pedophile. <laughs> Any other good pedophile movies? Hard Candy with Hard Candy. Elliot Page is and fucking great. What's uh, his face? I don't know. I just know that he makes her make uh, makes uh, the girl in it fucking uh, screwdrivers. He was in the Conjuring films. Don't know many pedophile movies. I there actually is quite a lot. Of those. <laughs> <laughs> Never <laughs> seen Lolita by um, Stanley Kubrick. Oh no, <laughs> it's not a book as well. I'm pretty yeah. sure Lolita was a. It's, not it's one of the banned books. If you it go, was. Is look, is look, Patrick is Wilson. Lovely Bones a pedophile or is he just a... Lolita is a... Yeah, the, just the guy's a Lovely Bones. Oh, we'll Lovely Bones. I don't remember. I don't, I've see never if seen you can Google pedophile films. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't fucking think that through, Gary. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know that meme where you just... You know what I mean? <laughs> You see, like, SWAT busting through the fucking ceiling. That's, that's what's about to happen here. It gets, it gets better. Jesus so Christ. So it says, popular films with paedophilia. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the fifth movie in on Google is That's My Boy with Adam Sandler and um, Andy Samberg. Yeah! What? Yeah, <laughs> fucking... <laughs> Fucking, have you seen That's My Boy? <laughs> right, so the premise of That's My Boy. The, pre- the premise of That's My Boy is. The premise of That's My Boy is that Adam Sand- is a young Adam Sandler. He's a bit of a. He's a bit of a kid about town. In school. He ends up in detention. And he ends up fucking his teacher. <laughs> oh, yes! Yeah. Gets, her, one, okay, gets her pregnant plan. at the age of 13. <laughs> She's in her fucking twenties. She goes to pr- she goes to prison and then is and is then played by fucking Susan Sarandon later on. And I'm just gonna say the actress that's playing the younger Susan Sarandon is fucking like I really exactly like Susan the Sarandon. How did how did he get? And yeah, <laughs> Kevin Bacon was the line through to this. But yeah, everyone was like, like that's the, this guy's claim to fame is that he fucked his hot teacher and everyone like he's getting like that, autographs. Right. He was on talk shows. He was abused. He put on t- yeah, that's <laughs> the thing. Is that it's literal pedophilia. <laughs> but he had a good time. He wouldn't say no, would he? I don't he? think the past two episodes of this podcast, this and the last, are usable. <laughs> no, they're <laughs> usable. It's, it's, it's the fact that... We're talking that movies here. Yeah, we're talking movies. It's the fact that Nicholas is in fucking none of this film. I didn't see yeah, the cut. You know, yeah. you know this kind of does relate to the to the film that we're actually it's talking about. We can about move it back bit. to Jennifer Jason Lee's character being 15 and seducing a 26-year-old. 26-year-old. Like she's the, guy, the guy had pedophilia. So, well, to so he was... Some of was some are born to, pedophiles, yeah, others have pedophilia <laughs> thrust upon, upon them. them. And <laughs> <laughs> that's a bald claim. To <laughs> <laughs> and Christ. whatever his name was in this film had it thrust upon him with might, 
Um, this film, which Nicolas Cage is in for all of <laughs> five <laughs> seconds total. <laughs> was it a better performance than ne- Never on Chase? No! No, no. Oh, he well! Had, it, no, it, he had the lines. It fit the film better. Yeah. Doesn't Not having lines, does he doesn't have li- lines in Willy's Wonderland. That's very true. And he's great in there. Yeah. But Does he play a mute? I would say... No, I don't know, maybe. On he's Never on Tuesday, he brings more to the role because he brought the nose to Never on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Literally brought <laughs> more to the role. Yeah. I would have loved if he'd managed to... If, if that was a thing that he'd kept going through his career, that he just, just had a massive fucking nose. nose. <laughs> National Treasure Nicholas Cage with a huge nose. I found it. Those tr- tiny... Abraham Lincoln glasses. Whose In- glasses instead of just ben looking at oh glasses. yeah, with the three D model. Yeah. Instead of just looking at our facts, he fucking <laughs> smells them. <laughs> Overall, this film is pretty good. Like I would yeah, say, it is. if you want a rainy day film, yeah. a coming of age film, where you're okay, I'm fucking to watching. I get. Yeah, if you want to, if you, I would recommend this film to other people. But the positive moments, Daniel, isn't it? <laughs> don't raise your eyes at me nah, I'm I, not I, showing you my tits <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I want the Jennifer Jason Lee's tatas but the, no, the overall idea is there's some storylines that could have been cut and didn't really need to but there's some of it where you're like ah it meanders yeah <laughs> but, uh, very last, quickly none of them, the thing that annoyed me is that none of them were really good people Apart from the, You're the in boys. high school, though. Everyone's. I know, but like, I think what Stacy, I think you're supposed to kind of feel for her, but I, you know, I didn't really. Jennifer Jason Lee's character. Yeah, she kind of like she for some for some reason she's actively going out her way for some for some reason needs to lose her virginity and then keeps finding bad people and then finds a good person and goes oh fuck him he he was boring didn't take my any of my things and then. I think it's supposed it's pregnant. So yeah, yeah, it's supposed to reflect that sort of ignorant bliss sort of stage. Yeah. And like that uh, she does like the abortion stuff, she gives a like this just out of the blue. I mean she is <laughs> there is a scene of her crying on the phone to her friend because the guy who got her pregnant didn't pay for it or show yeah. up to take her there. I liked him up until that point. Was his but, name yeah. Marlo? The way it insinuated she was more upset the name. fact that he never showed up than the fact that she had just had an abortion. So, or was that just the way she was Well, he like, tried to get the money. Is that from, you, you see yeah. like, the scene before that, he tries to get the money. He was so ashamed he, that he could Seventy five dollars. Bargain. <laughs> 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 and he tries to fight his best friend because he calls him out for being a dickhead which yeah. he does. <laughs> Yeah. It's a fucking weird And movie. then everyone makes up in the end. He's still a toxic friend. And yeah. you see that everyone goes on to live a pretty good life. Apart from Sean Penn, who spends all his money saving a girl. He got Van Halen to play his birthday. birthday. Yeah. yeah, but he spent all his money on fucking Van Halen. You don't care. I'd surfing. spend my money on fucking Van Halen. Don't even like Van Halen. But <laughs> it just seems what's like... The big, what's the Van Halen song? Jump. Go jump. ahead and jump! Jump! Put your heads up in the air and da, 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 the way you feel. I don't think anyone knows the lyrics. Just know the dun 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 It's like it's like the synth uh, chords from the eighties. It's like <laughs> For, uh, fun movie fact, uh, completely not related. Um, it's just, it always related to Van Halen is that. That in um, in Back to the Future, yes, when he's uh, trying to uh, get his dad to go to the to go to the dance, he when he dresses up as the, in the plutonium suit and calls himself Darth Vader, and he he puts a cassette into the into the tape player that said um, Eddie Van Halen on it. Now Van Halen didn't want their music used in the film. But Eddie Van Halen was like, I'm fucking down. So he just recorded uh, some guitar oh. um, for that bit. Unheard Van Halen mixtape. Yeah, yeah, it is. And that mixtape is some Back to the Future, a better film than Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Yes, Back to the Future, <laughs> one of my favourite films Linear of all time. Linear storyline and not confusing in Prince Philip. Yeah, not much tits in it though. Yeah. Is this... There is a bit it of does... casual incest in it, though. Yeah, no, or attempted yeah. incest. Yeah. <laughs> it's it not pedophilia like or anything. <laughs> my brother. My what? My brother. 
Exactly. There's a, it's, it's in it's in it. After she necks Marty, she's like, that felt weird. It felt like I was kissing my mother. Felt weird. In the car, yes. In the car, yeah. yeah. In the car after she forces herself. <laughs> after after he goes, Jeez, you smoke cool? This is some episode. A lot of editing. Yeah. <laughs> no. No, this, this is, is, this is, is, this is getting it, fucking out. Uh, this is actually one of it's the It's usable. Yeah. It's just... It's Edgy, problematic. It's not edgy. No. I'll come really back to bite this in a couple of years. But hey, if we, if we can make one podcast disappear, we can make. <laughs> we can do it again. No one's gonna hear just my voice into the ever. <laughs> Don't say that. Don't fucking jinx us. Saying that, thank you for joining us, Josh, for episodes nine. No worries. Nicholas Cage and Sasha Treasure. Thank you, Kieran. Join us next week for episode 10, where we'll be watching Face Off. Oh, oh yes. yes. Okay, we're in the movie where he actually acts and speaks. Is there anything you want to plug or uh, say? Or you, you what have got the microphone. What have you got on the leg? This is hot one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell us, you got the bit. This camera, this camera, this camera. <laughs> what can we be wearing? Nothing. Just enjoying the children's time. Welcome back on the Especially on the podcast for a bit. Yep.